Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog here at New England Reptile Distributors. And I tell you what, today we are going to talk about a unbelievably wild animals. This, is, of course, is a super microscalar, scaleless ball python. You guys know I love scaleless snakes, corn snakes, rat snakes, all the type of stuff. And yeah, I did produce the very first scaleless ball python, but these guys are actually a different mutation called microscale, whereas the ones I produced came from a super scaleless head. Nevertheless, crazy the way that you pull those scales away and things look really wild. And Kevin has some pretty cool mutations with these ones so we're going to just jump in with kevin look at a bunch of super micro scales and you know kind of just revel at the awesomeness of these animals so this is the incomplete dominant micro scale so it's a, it definitely is it's wild because you know it is really different than the scaleless heads that like you said they have little tiny scales now i will see some jumbling in scaleless heads but nothing as extreme as this so I mean, does it ever, what else is the difference? Between so, so like obviously the pebbled scalation. So I yeah. can pretty much almost like feel like an adult scaleless or micro scale, excuse me, and feel that it feels different than right. let's say a scaleless head. Cause a scaleless head is smoother. Um, so we get uh, some animals with really extreme. This one's reasonable, but the scalation is gone or it's very, very small. And they often look, there's the heat pits. Yeah, so the heat pits aren't there either. They're completely gone. And you're right, like the back right here is literally different scales yes. than a normal ball python because a scaleless head is just like a normal ball python just lacking some scales on its head. Now, sometimes you can have pretty radical amount of missing scales, but you will never have like the, the heat pits gone. I mean, never. That's like I've never seen that before. So th that's a pretty radical difference as well. The only basic difference is, is where they originated. <laughs> and so I have this phenotype mm -hmm. which is just different than the scaleless heads uh but it's just a different line because right. all the other ones come from you right comes exactly. from that you're one animal and you know i have to give you a lot of props because when you started with your first one with a little bit of missing scalation yeah, everyone, thought, everyone thought it was crazy and you stuck to it and, and you nailed it literally yeah. perfect team dobrik dude yeah, what bro. up bro check out, check out my youtube channel it's uh at David, uh, blogspot.com. Yeah. Blog, blogspot.com. <laughs> blogspot.com. <laughs> a micro scale kind of like adds something. It's like an enhancing gene. Yeah. So this is legitimately, this is a micro scale, lesser coral glow. Right. And um, the original micro scale had like this pattern reduction, almost mm -hmm. like it's an enchi. Right. And you still see it's oh, you genetic. you totally see it. Yeah, it's crazy how it does actually change the pattern of the animal. I mean, it cleans it up a tremendous amount, makes really crisp marks. It's it's just wild. I had no idea that the entire bodies were like this. It's wild. But you can see, just rub it oh and you gosh. can kind of feel it. Yeah, it's, it feels more like an Angolan python. That's exactly yeah, what yeah. I think. It, it yeah. definitely feels like an Angolan python. That's wild. That is so cool. Right here is a coral glow, GHI, micro scale. Again, they could be pastel too, I think. Yeah, yeah, it might be because of those things. It's amazing, again, how that, that micro scale really does put a kind of interesting so spin on no the animal. Yeah, no heat pits on this at all. Wow, that's wild. And yeah, again, I mean, with the scale, said, I just assumed the micro scales had mainly to do with things on their head. So uh, interesting how it affects the entire body and changes the pattern, the color, ever, the, certainly the feel. So. Definitely, I didn't expect that. This is the first time I've actually seen him in person and uh, pretty wild. I mean, that's that's pretty cool. Oh <laughs> it won't bite you in the nose uh, like that gator yeah, did. Yeah, like the gator did. <laughs> I didn't know if it was gonna be genetic, but when I bred it the first time and some of the babies came out missing scales, I immediately jumped to the super may be completely scaleless. I've said this a million times that I don't know how I made that jump. Like it was a crazy jump, you know, to go from missing a few scales to being completely scared. I, I super, remember, yeah. I remember about that. And even I might've been like, oh, well, yeah, good yeah, luck yeah, with that. Yeah, I think most people thought I was crazy. I, and, and when it really came down to the end, when I was cutting that clutch, I thought I was crazy. That was the first time the doubt. For like three years, I had been thinking like, oh, this is gonna produce a scaleless animal. And then when I finally got to the point where I was gonna cut the eggs, I was like, why would I think that? So I was really doubting. And then when I cut the first egg, there was a normal ball python. I thought for sure, okay, done. And so yours came out of the wild. So like, did you buy it that way? Yeah, so what happened with mine is that uh, I was bringing a shipment of ball pythons in, you know, a bunch of high-end ball pythons. And I probably wouldn't have bought this animal 
if it wasn't for the fact that I was already bringing them in. What happened, my West African guy sent me an email. This is when we were getting emails from them. And uh, sent me an email, and there was a picture of an animal that was missing quite a few scales on its head. Pretty similar to this one right yes. here, without the micro scale part though, but quite a bit of missing scales. I literally didn't think anything of it. And I was like, listen, man, and I can't believe I'm gonna tell you guys the real secret behind this. I was like, I'll give you a hundred bucks, throw it in the shipment. Yeah. Literally, that's what I valued it at. Like it wasn't even a big deal, right? And uh, and he was like, okay, fine. Get For a hundred bucks, he shipped it to me. And I really didn't even think much of it until a year and a half later when I bred it and some of the babies came out, scaleless head. Uh, that's when I was like, oh my God, there might be a super version that's scaleless. What are you doing? Uh, walking. I know, you, I haven't even seen you. I've been here I forever know, and you just ignore me. Well, what, is, are you upset with me? What did no, I do? No, I'm trying to get stuff done. Oh man. I know, I know. Unlike you, that doesn't work. Okay, right. good. You keep I'm the only work. one here that you works. Keep, keep Dude, are you David Dover? Uh, actually, I am. It's called, Matter of fact. Snakes, oh yeah, yeah no, I, I I've been breeding snakes my whole life. I love your vlog, dude. Oh thanks. Which, 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 which ones do you like the best? Which what was your best episode? Uh, what was your favorite the episode? Favorite one was when that guy, his name is Brian, got bit in the face by a oh. That was a good one. That was a good one. Now, I get a picture with, picture oh. with you later, right? All right, yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks, sounds good. Thanks, we'll see, we'll thanks, see. Thanks, David. This one is wild looking. I mean, the head, the baldness on the head here is crazy. So what's the This is This is likely a uh, coral glow, mm -hmm. super pastel, pin, hidden gene woman. Oh, that makes sense. Wow, that's a really wild animal. And again, when you start to strip away scales, things change so much. So even though the micro scales ex has an expression with the phenotype, it's pretty wild to think when this animal gets all scaleless, how crazy it's gonna look. I mean, it's every time I see a new mutation in scaleless, whether it's micro scale or scaleless heads, super scaleless heads, it's wild how different it looks. So uh, he's far ahead of the game. I mean, he's breeding into all kinds of other stuff. So it's, this one's gonna eventually be a pretty awesome animal to add to the, the repertoire of uh, scaleless animals. Now on to the actual scaleless animals. I mean, wow, it's crazy. You know, again, we produce scaleless ball pythons, but we only produce normals because we hadn't really bred them beyond that. So now we're getting into some mutations. It is ridiculous how it looks. So is this like a bumblebee or an enchi? Bumble, or? Bumblebee, enchi. Ah, gotcha. Yep. Micro, uh, super micro scale. Wow. And you can see they get these, they'll get like a little mask and they'll okay. stick this piece of shed okay. in the front of their eyes. And okay. then sometimes it, it breaks off. So you have to do like due diligence. Now this is a learning experience for me. So I think I'm going to get better mm -hmm. at keeping these, but I, I think it's just like one of those things I just, I needed to know even before I was like selling this stuff, I needed to understand like where we're at before I could just, you know, try to launch a project and start selling it. But it's, it's hard to like, you know, what's the quality of the animal? Is the animal even viable and all that stuff like that. And it is indeed viable with, with some proper basic care as they get bigger. They get, they, get better. Better. they get better. So I think this is just the, the tricky time. They're so small, the small mass mm -hmm. and all that. But you get this just super clean. They're very, very soft. I remember first touching yours. Yeah. Exactly. And I was just like, Oh my God. It's crazy, like, you know, the first time you touch a scaleless snake, it is ridiculous how it doesn't feel at all, it's smooth, it's soft. I mean, we had a million things. People sometimes say it feels like a peach. Sometimes people say it feels like old skin. Uh, the weirdest one we had was a dry carrot. I don't know what, you know, I don't know how that was uh, in there, but but, but regardless, we have uh, a lot Being of... a professional uh, dry <laughs> carrot handler, <laughs> I would say that's completely wrong. Dry carrots, that's like doing a down of a dry carrot. Dry carrots are beautiful. <laughs> it was the story that Amir bought it from Bill and then sold it to you, or someone bought it from somebody and sold it to So it was kicking around. They knew the snake with the mi missing scales on its head and the pebbled scales yeah. and it looks different and it was kicking around for a while. Yeah. Amir got wise to it and got it and then sold it to so one of my guys. You know, you were way ahead. So this is like, I came in way after the fact. I didn't have anything. So I got into this project and they're like, we want you in the project because you know, you can, can kind of get the whole thing yeah. rolling. Not until just a few years ago do we actually produce the homozygous super expression of this. And ultimately, so the scaleless head and the microscale both make scaleless snakes. As babies, you really have to uh, coddle them and care for them mm -hmm. more yeah. than a normal ball python. So they, they lose their moisture, they're very right. small body mass. They lose their moisture, so they get stuck sheds, they go into repeated sheds, that's part of the whole thing. And now I've stepped in and done some babying now to uh, get these guys okay. So I think ultimately what, what we're gonna find out is as they get bigger, they have more mass right. with some babying. Yeah. They'll be a fine snake. 
And so this is just a lesser than. Yeah, so you got that one. That's so this like is the, the homozygous micro with a incomplete dominant lesser. So if, if people are like listening to some of our gibberish when we're talking about phenotype, genotype, homozygous, if we say something is the phenotype, like a pastel jungle, it is the look. The look, exactly. But it's a heterozygous for the full expression, right. which is called the homozygous. Right. So the phenotype is a visual pastel yep. jungle. The genotype is it is a het super pastel right. and the full expression is a super pastel or the homozygous and do you know who made those all first you yeah and that's all my name there you too. go there you go and everyone's kind of <laughs> mixing with that kevin was always been ahead of the curve not only in the production of animals but also kind of the understanding of what we're actually doing with the animals and as well as putting terms on things and and how about like names that. goofy names oh kevin's good with goofy names but i Soul think we're pretty good everything. i think yeah. we're pretty good but, but, yeah, but, his, but, his but remember I was kind of like the first person to start that because yeah. the, the pastel, the coral glow, all that. I mean, all these different bumblebee, honeybee, killer bee, yeah. super pastel. Those are all just my my names, and I was doing that to excite people right. because I was still breeding ball pythons because I couldn't afford the woman pythons and stuff like that. <laughs> and I mean, dead honest, dude, when I was watching the stuff that you had, you had so you were you were ahead of me in so many different ways. I was just I was still like struggling to be that weirdo hobbyist, but how can I do this and actually make it a living? Yep. And you were more proficient because you had pushed ahead with all the um, colubrids. Yeah. And that was making well, I took, money. Yeah, I took a lot of the colubrid mentality to ball pythons is what you happened. You know one good thing too, that you have key, you have Lori. Yeah, oh yeah, no, absolutely. No joke, dude, no, I had listen, no one. I had no one, I was yeah. like, so it was No, always... Lori is, uh, I've said this a million times, all my businesses, without Lori, I, I would fail. You know, and I, I don't know how someone like you does it without Lori. Do you have a worker or do you just hang out? I just hang out. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Just manager, manager privileges. You're the manager, right? You're manager, the manager privileges, so, yeah. Yeah. Set by example. 100 percent. Okay, good. Yeah. Like, what you <laughs> Maybe in the bathroom, dude. What, you pooped no, in the there sink? Was one, there was one in, in room the room. He pooped in the sink. Dude. It'll be interesting to see, yeah, once they are older and if they, they, they turn around. But, you know, again, silkies, I think it's the, and that's the silky dragons, the scaleless bearded dragons, uh, are probably the perfect kind of example of what these things are like, right? You know, yeah. I mean, they're still viable. You can still keep them their whole lives, but you're going to have to put some, some extra work into you, it. You like moisturizer on the back yeah. sometimes, getting the scales off. And it, what you do not want to do is you don't want to leave the skin on it lingering. So the skin is now food for, let's say, bacteria, ambient bacteria, and actually fungus. Now, why do you think that scaleless corn snakes, scaleless rat snakes are so viable. But we have different lines of scaleless corn snakes, don't we? Because I heard one line is quite good. Mm -hmm. And then I think anything that has partial scalation right. is the key. You know, the ventral. Because they have the ventral scale. I yeah. think that is actually key because part of them is doing the normal right. shedding right. routine. And then the, the rest of it, because the scale scales slide off the back of the right. animal. So if I have normal scalation so in the belly. Feeling, it's like a tractor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I, I would have. That was the one thing I was hoping about the super micros that we'd have animals that would have, some, have some partial scales, scalation. Yeah. And yeah. so far we haven't seen that. So we've yeah. had basically scaleless animals. And, uh, but it's, it's a fun thing. It, it's a really modified thing too, because usually we're modifying a pattern of color. Yeah. But now we have an anomaly. We're actually getting a physical change. This one is one I'm pretty excited about because, uh, you know, obviously it's a pinstripe. And I was really curious what pinstripe was going to look like with scaleless. Now, is there anything else in this besides it's, pinstripe? It's possible yellow belly. Okay, gotcha. And yep. the one thing I noticed with homozygous expression of the micro scale, when you're looking at these combos, it becomes very confusing because it doesn't mirror a lot of the stuff that we're already making now. So right. you, the color's all wrong, yep. the pattern's wrong. So this is once again, I'm kind of like thrown back into, wow, I just got to kind of figure this out. And I'm just, you know, I've been kind of quietly dealing with these and looking at them. Well, this is amazing. Like I said, it, it, again, it's interesting how the scales can add so much color, texture, pattern to things. And when you take those scales away, crazy how crisp and different the, 
the colors can be. And it's, I mean, this is, again, this was the animal I was dreaming of when I first produced the scaleless ball python because pinstripes mean so much to me, obviously. And uh, there you have it, guys. Uh, super micro scale, scaleless ball pythons. Uh, pretty awesome. Not only to see what we did with our stuff eventually, but now come here and see what's going on with the micro scales with Kevin. Do me a favor, go over to his channel, subscribe. I'm going to put a link in the description. I'm also going to pin a comment. Go show him some love. If you like this video, here's the video of me producing the very first scaleless ball python. Right down here, you can hit a whole playlist of a bunch of cool stuff. Over here, you can subscribe. While you're at it, can you turn those post notifications off for me? Remember to have a wonderful day. Be kind to somebody, right, Kevin? And I'll see you guys tomorrow.